Yeah, and no, my colleague had a problem with her back originally, and I said, well, I can pray for you. She's all lovely, and her, her back got better. And that's that. That's great. Um, and then a little while later, she said, oh, I've got this painful hip. And I said, well, yeah, I, I could could pray for mm. you. But we were sat out, not too dissimilar to this, you know, sort of table, sort of nurse's station, if you like, you yes. call it that, in a, in a relatively busy area. And she said, well, look, you can't really put your hand on my hip. I said, well, I don't need to. I said, do you know how I've told you that I'm full of Jesus? She said, yes. I said, it always makes me laugh. Could you imagine that I'm a jug? And she said, well, yes, which I always think is quite amusing. A matter of fact, well, yes. So I said, well, I'm just going to sit here as you're sat next to me, and I'm just, I, 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 I'm just going to lean over. So I did, just sat there and leant over, mm. and I'm just going to pour the love of God all over your hip. And she, was, she said, Okay. And I often think, actually... Now, that might be classed as odd, wouldn't it? Well, but the interesting thing for me is... normal. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of fact. Middle of your urgent treatment centre. Yes. No one knows what's going on. Yeah, just so I'm just... Leaning. Leaning. <laughs> <laughs> and within a second, she said, oh, you've done it again, you yeah. know. And very quickly, I'm thinking, yeah, that Jesus definitely has done it again. And, and the whole shift... She was scooting in and out of the cubicles and she would stand there and sort of, sort of wiggle her hip, go, I went, mean, yeah, that's definitely Jesus. <laughs> but you, that, you can't hide this stuff because hmm. this stuff happens out in the open. I had a, another one, one of my colleagues, and she said, oh, do that thing on her back. Do that thing on her back. You know, that thing is the love and power of God hmm. and his Holy Spirit. There is only one source, you know, because I think people sometimes get a little bit worried about, oh, what is that thing? Yeah. It's, it's God. And and it's Jesus. And it's God in you, through you. Exactly. You're, you're, you're literally exactly. through this river that's overflowing through, <clears throat> yeah. through, through a jug. Well. And, but you've got so many stories like that, haven't you? And I say it's not been just colleagues, but but patients who've mm -hmm. coming in, you know, where you've seen yeah. amazing breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. And as, as always, you follow the sort of procedures that, mm -hmm. that are necessary. But um, you've seen some extraordinary things going on with, with the patients as well, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I think one story... It's back when I was in the ambulance service, actually, okay. which I think in terms of if you look at impact and impact for family and future events, because then it's still playing out and mm. I, I, it's just lovely. So there was a lady um, who was in A&E and I had, um, I think I was, yeah, I, there was a role that I was doing at the time with the ambulance liaison officer. And the yeah. idea was that you were trying to speed up the exit of the cruise. So they can yes. go away. It's good for years ago now, but um one of my colleagues was there, but he was in his civvies, you know, he wasn't in uniform. I said, oh, what are you doing? He said, oh, my mum's in A&E. Now, I didn't know, but he said his father had died um, days previously. Wow. His mum was under the Royal um, Orthoped National Orthopaedic and was looking at her leg, hmm. was going to be amputated because of her issues with the knees, ops that didn't go the right in the right direction. And she'd got a, basically, it's almost like a, a vacuum pump on the leg to try and help the stuff drain away mm. and the idea being that they were doing that to sustain it long enough so that they could get through the funeral yes so that then she would have this procedure so that was that was the story the guy my colleague um he obviously had just seen his father pass mm. away he wasn't in a good place with his relationship with god and uh and i said well do you think your mum would be okay for me to pray for mm. her now we're in a busy a and &E department so he said oh, i'll go and ask her he said yeah no definitely so we pulled the curtain across and I, I think I just literally just put my hand on her knee. I don't think a word had come out of my mouth. Mm. And I literally jumped back and she felt, we saw it, let alone felt it, this mm. jolt in her knee. It was quite, quite an interesting mm. experience. She'd come in in a wheelchair. She walked out um, wow. and she wasn't in pain, the pain that she was in anymore. And subsequently, um, this operation didn't go ahead. And what I thought about at the time was, isn't it amazing that, that my colleague, who's just lost his earthly father, really good, can get to see what a good, good God can do mm. and would do and does do. And, and subsequently, he is now a vicar. Wow. And he married another colleague of mine. And they're both um, obviously um, full-on, full-time ministry. They've got kids. Wow. And I just think about it. And they, as a family, they'd been through quite a bit. So, so was he a Christian before that? Yeah, he? yeah, yeah, he was. But it yeah, inspired he was. him to move on in, in his... Yeah, in, well, he certainly had no intention life. of going <laughs> into mm. ministry or anything like that. He was he was going the other direction, I think. He was just a lot of, a lot mm. of disappointment, I think. Yes, okay. Yeah.